Hi. Okay, so we were at this point where we had, we have a selection of the waterfall and we're going up to the select menu and refining the edge and we were talking about how you can view this shape either on black or white probably the most commonly used just to check out your edge and look at it and so I'm just going to work with black now it looks really chopped out because the selection was loose and that's where this wonderful edge detection works click on smart radius in most books they talk about almost always using it and it just makes it a lot more careful about exactly what you're wanting to select and by default this paintbrush is chosen and that's what you want and when you come into your image you can see that my brush size is this size and I want to overlap both the waterfall and what what's around the sides of it actually the black in this case so with my brackets next to the letter P the left bracket makes your brush smaller the right one makes it bigger I'm going to cruise on in and coat both the waterfall and the background and it'll bring back the background it's analyzing both the waterfall just this part where it's it's coming down and is misty I don't think we want to do that on the river part but we can try it and you can see it really does a great job of sort of working out the edges and that's probably good for that now if you want to erase any of that you want to take it back to the way it was before you started to refine the edges in this way. I can always come back in and just clean up parts that that I don't like so much. Now the other thing we want to do is use a little feathering to soften these edges down here so that this will be in front of the other picture and some of it will and we just want to work this out a little bit better. I might go back up to refine edge just because I want to see what this does and we're just playing around that looks pretty good Yeah, maybe a little of that we can always re-edit this part so that's what the fun of it is is that if you don't like it try try again but um, so I've had some fun here with a little bit of the feathering maybe this time 1.2 and I might even come up here and see what happens if I refine the top but again I don't like this residue so again go back into erase and clean up some of that stuff get rid of little, little areas I'm gonna see if I like that and that's pretty good uh, you're smoothing the edges if you want which I don't think we need feathering to soften the edges contrast really is gonna create more contrast and we don't want that with soft you know with a soft waterfall and shifting edge again is going to add more area. It's going to bring back the background or take more away. And check that out. It looks pretty good. Now we're going to output, and this part's important. Last time we output to a selection, but this time, this is the bomb. This is so great. You want to output to new layer with layer mask, and that's going to make a duplicate layer from what you have here turn off the eyeball and give you a brand new layer and let's do it click OK Yay! and now we've got our wonderful project here we've got the waterfall coming outside and kind of splashing over and it's not perfect because we're doing this live but you can see that you know we might move this down so that this lands on the ground I'm just analyzing it with you and maybe the river needs to be at the base. If you wanted to do something like that, note it's made a copy of what you had. Just hold down your command key on the Mac or the control key on the PC and add the waterfall background so that they move together and link them. Then with the move tool, we can adjust. Come on. Oh, I forgive me. I uh, must. I locked this move layer. You gotta forgive me. Take off the padlock. And then we can move this down. We don't want to move it too far because it's coming off of the monitor. But if we had more room, you can see 
you know, I'd be, I'd be checking this out. And that's why size matters, because I'm not going to enlarge this. If I enlarge this layer just so that it'll fit, uh, you've got a disaster, because this will invent little pixels and your detail will be gone. So I'm kind of stuck with the way it is, so I'm just going to figure it out. Now, some of the mask that we created got left behind. And just remember that masks give the ability to erase and bring back, and we're going to look more at them. But this right here is your mask. And that's what we created in Refine Edge when we said new layer with layer mask. This is your mask. And these are awesome because you click on either color, which is your picture, or your mask, and your mask will erase parts that you don't want if you paint with black, and that's why everything around the waterfall is black, because on that layer, that's the part that's transparent. So I'm going to paint with black using a larger brush, and just kind of get rid of some of this excess that really we don't need. And get back on the Move tool. And just try situating this. I'm just kind of looking at what, what seems like the right way to go. Something like that. Have them sort of dribble off. It's not exactly right, and you know, but that's the general idea. That because we have a layer in the front, you can see that. That's that layer. Then we have the same layer behind the TV, so together they create an ensemble. And this is so much fun. I hope you've had fun. I've had a blast. And that's really the goal. We'll get more into masks. I want to talk about those more in another section, but this is just to get us started with the pen tool, with Refine Edge, and with the beginning of these layer masks. All right, thanks. Have a good one, and we'll look forward to the next video tutorial.